Uh, last session is Tony Federer, the uh, inventor of the iPhone with Steve Jobs. <laughs> and uh, just, um, actually, why don't you come on stage, Tony, if you, if you yeah, yeah, wow, he's, you need a microphone. We're getting you, getting you, I just, um, um, I just want to make a quick, quick announcement. It's okay, Hi. hello, hello, oh, okay, it's working. Uh, can you put, I, we, I, uh, this is Tony Fadel. Wow. Oh, someone said wow. Wow, okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you created the iPhone. And a few other things, but yes. The I really, the iPhone was a, a team thing. That's, definitely a team it's thing. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. And you also have a, um, um, have a, uh, a book. I have a book. That a is book awesome. Build. build. It's been out for a year now. It just came out in French last week. About, and Swedish last week. And it's a book about building products. It's all about building, well, building yourself, building teams, building products, building companies, all those things. And uh, I was trying to get the timer, don't worry. And uh, you've just released that book in French? Just released in France? Like, like last week? Last week. week. Uh, yeah, last week, like literally Tuesday. Yeah. And now it's coming in 24 more, 20, 22 more languages? Yes. And more coming. So yeah, it's really been amazing in less than a year that all of this stuff's happening. So it's pretty cool. And of course, the theme of the conference is, uh, is AI. Yeah. So I thought you would have a thought or two about AI. I have more than a thought or two. Would you mind uh, if we sit? Let's sit. Okay. Where are we gonna sit? Yeah. Right here? Right here. Okay. Green's my favorite, I'll take green. You take green? You, you can have green. any color you like. Okay. <laughs> are you gonna fire away questions at me? Like you did in Ibiza? I never let you talk and tell my life instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> Is it, um, well, are you excited by AI? I put down, I, look, the first thing is AI's been around for a lot of years. It just so, so happened to come into our, you know, collective thoughts four to five months ago. When, when I built Nest, the thermos that I designed actually had an AI in it. We couldn't tell everyone, this was in 2011, we had AI in the thermostat to save energy, to help you save energy. But we couldn't tell anyone it was AI. Do you have AI in mind when you, so when you started the iPhone, it was by the way 10 years before it came out. Right. The iPhone, well, so you have that starting the iPhone, so starting the iPhone happened at a company called General Magic, and we did that in 1991, 92, 93. We basically built the iPhone 15 years too soon, and then I got a chance to actually build it a second time uh -huh. uh, then. But in AI, I've been doing AI uh, since, you know, like I said, 2010, and AI has actually been infused in so many of the products that you use today, but you didn't know that until literally the chat GPT moment that happened December, November, December last year. Because we put a human interaction method in it, you know, basically text, so you could talk to it and it could talk back. It, and then all of a sudden went, oh, AI, what's going on? AI's been here, people, AI's been here. And if that's okay, I'm gonna fire a few questions, but we'll take questions from the room because last year oh, we'll see. people all, yeah. Yeah, yeah, tr sure. it would be great to, yeah, about anything, right? But oh. AI first. Okay. You, you just uh, sent me a few stories and you, t you told oh, me. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's, let, you want me to just go on? Yeah, just go on. Like, funny. <sighs> okay, look. <laughs> okay, what's, what's all the technology, well, humans have co-evolved with all the technologies we've created. Ever since the beginning of time, or humans, <laughs> we have created technologies and we co-evolved co with them. And we heard earlier about I versus me, <laughs> I versus me. Well, we can either be subject to technology or we can use them on our behalf to further humanity, I versus me. And so literally what we, what we always do, and this is if you look at through all of it, new technology is created, usually there's a war around them and then humanity gets better, all right? AI, we talk about it all the time as if there's some sentient being that's gonna take over and we're gonna be subjected to it. That's not how it's gonna work. No? AI is literally a reflection of us. Large language models are just a reflection of us. 
It's not some super intelligent being that came anywhere. It can put new connections together. But if there's new data that is not in the system, it isn't going to come up with that data until humans discover it and put it into the system. So again, AI is not going to take over the world. What is going to happen is humans can use AI in bad ways to reprogram other humans. Okay, that's what happens. That's what happened with nuclear weapons. That happened. We are not going to all of a sudden have AI take over our world. Okay, it's going to be humans using it against humans or humans using it to further our species. Okay, in a positive manner. AI is not just going to be this thing. And there's not just one AI. And we're learning this, we're seeing this, this has been great two days. You're learning it's not one AI. It's going to have all kinds of personalities. Like, wouldn't it be amazing to have an AI of the Kogis? Right? And we can ask it questions. What if it was AI? Uh, but, 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 but. Uh, what? If they, if they wrote everything down. Of I don't like that. I, I understand. Well, you let's know, but, uh, a another thing. tribe. No, but that's an interesting point because there is a whole debate about the, uh, you know, the, who owns it, the content, right? right. And, sure. and I have a friend who, who put some content from Ashaninka tribes. Yeah. He was teaching songs, Ashaninka songs. And my advice was don't, don't, don't do that or make sure you ask first because I am sure. pretty sure they, they, don't, they, they pass this knowledge like to whomever should receive it. Uh, no, I understand. And, and we all have to, and we're seeing this already, we have to honor the data and who has the data and what they want done with the data, just like an artist cares about where their songs are played or how it's used or where it's used. So we're going to have to worry about that. But right now, what we have is we have a crazy set of data that we train these large language models with. We don't know, we don't know all the things we put into them. So think of it this way. Let me give you an example. If when you have a child, you worry about the schools they go to, the, the kids they hang out with, the things they do. You try to influence them with different experiences, different events, what have you. And as they grow older, well, then you're really, you know, oh, okay, they're in the real world. But you hope you've trained them with values and, um, values and morals and ethics that allow them to work in a world to know the difference between right and wrong. Today, when we make a large language model, we start with a child and we put everything in the world more or less, that we can get our hands on into that child. And then we tell the child, when we, it does something we don't like, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Would you ever raise your child with all the world's knowledge and then start to try to pick apart all the things that are bad inside of it to try to stop it? It's basically intelligence by subtraction or goodness by subtraction instead of addition. The other way, like we raise ourselves we raise our humanity and we have done to date. We need to really get and understand the data models that are in there. We don't want to pick the worst of society and the best of society and put it all in a mix and say, okay, ask questions. We want to pick the best of society. We want to pick the best things that humans have done. Wouldn't it be amazing to have an AI that was all Nobel Prize winners? But don't you think that we want to put, do we, how much do we control these things? Like, uh, well, we can control it. We cannot. We can control it. We can. We can control the data that because are put in these models. generative AI, if I understand, and I don't yes, understand much. Yes, generative AI. Is supposed to self-generate itself. No, okay. That's another misnomer. Okay, today, thank you. Today, today, when you use chat GPT 2, 3, 3.5, 4, when you use that, it's a static model. So everything it's has been It's trained and it's static, and then when we retrain it, when it goes from 3.5 to 4, it's retrained. But when it's 3.5, it stays 3.5. That's 3 .5. why it doesn't go to the web, and I cannot tell him, go browse everything about Tony Fadel and tell me this. It doesn't. You can have plugins to do that, but the base model doesn't learn. When we learn, when humans learn, we learn something during the day like we did today. We'll go to sleep. We'll consolidate that. We'll update our model, and tomorrow we'll wake up with new ideas and new learnings. Chat GPT or these other models don't do that. That today. Okay. So if humans are in the loop from the time it learns to the next version of the next version of it, we need to make sure humans stay in the loop between version three and version four and five and six and seven. Today, it's like that. If we allow it to self-learn so and it learns any data it wants, that's when there's a problem. So inevitably, Putin and other uh, people in power like that, that uh, we that are sometimes a little 
dangerous. We'll, we'll put Absolutely. that in robots. You, you saw the Boston Dynamics robots with the guns on top. Oh, absolutely. You, yeah, and, and I've seen a video of ChatGPT in that. You can talk to Absolutely. Right? So we're in Star Wars now, right? We, we could have a million of sure. those. Send that to Ukraine. Absolutely. But for Ukraine. Like, oh, of course, this, this is not manifestation. I'm not saying But it can happen, right? It can happen. It will. Or will it? There will be people trying things like this. But if you look at it, let's talk about data models. Let's talk about data models. Today, we have an incredible, and, and open source is a great set of data, right? We have a great open source model today. It's called Wikipedia. There's tons of data on there. Not perfect, but it's a lot of data about a lot of things, and it's been human curated, it's human edited, and it's watched over, and it's been watched over for over 20 years. And guess what? People have tried to hack it, people have tried to make that data bad, and it self heals because of the way it works. We can do the same thing with the data models that we train large language models with. We can do the same thing with those types of data. What I want to see, what I absolutely want to see is I want to see a resume, a CV for every AI agent I use. Just like when I hire someone, I want to know what their background is. I want to know how they were influenced. I want to know, well, in some cases, in, in this case, I want to know, and typically I don't care. I want to know what tests it, it and how it achieved those tests. I want to know if it hallucinated. I want to know all of these things in its CV so that I know which AIs I want to hire. I want a LinkedIn for AIs. Mm -hmm. Because I want to see what their experience is. I want to see what's good, what's bad. I want to be able to choose. I want transparency. Just like we, tra we have transparency, in the, more or less, in the people we hire. Right? And the people we choose to be around. We need to do the same thing with these AI agents or intelligent assistants, as I think of it. Because I don't just want to use any random one. Right? We go to New York Times or Wall Street Journal for a reason. We don't go to crazy websites because we're like, oh, wait a second. I don't know who those people are. I want a chain of trust. I want that CV of those AI agents I choose to hire to do things for me can or to train me, for that matter, if you're in an educational setting. Can we open to questions, Tony? Sure, absolutely. Um, it, so we have two mics set up. Just uh, raise your hand. And while people think about questions, uh, yeah, we'll uh, just yeah. raise your hand on the side. There's people. someone oh, here back we go. there in the middle. Yeah, right here. We have right here. We have uh, do you think it can create a startup? Because there are like stories like create me that startup. That is like way far away, right? You what do you mean? Create GPT. me what? Create me a startup. I have ten thousand dollars. I want to start up on that. Oh, it's absolutely possible. You can do it, it today. Is. Absolutely. Sure. I've seen people in a one hour create a website, their marketing materials, everything with just a bunch of props. I'm not saying it's great, but it gets you started. Hmm. You still have to have lots of experience in doing it. It's not going to know that, you know. I, people have asked me to do actually an AI version of me, like, and my book, <laughs> yeah. and all the yeah. podcasts, Perfect. and all the training I've done. I, I'm just saying, there are, there's already a girlfriend that you can hire for, I think it's a dollar a minute, who will be your girlfriend, and there's now 10,000 people using it. Literally, it happened over the last two weeks. This is stuff is real, and you can make personality-based AIs, and they can be used for all kinds of things. Scary. We can make well, we can make an AI of the power community. That it, you hear about the scary stuff, but there can be great stuff. Yeah. People want to talk to uh, lots of people in this audience all the time. Well, they can't. They don't have infinite time to talk to everyone. Well, what if you could talk to, you know, Einstein? What if you could talk to Richard Feynman? Yeah. What if you could talk to all these Nobel Prize winners? You can do that with these kinds of AI things. Hey, Tony. Uh, yes, hello. Got there you go. For you. Hey, <clears throat> asking for the parents in the room, how would you recommend that uh, we prepare our families and our children for the onset of this technology? It's, again, we co-evolve with our tools. You need to learn how to use them. And they're not, they're not scary. If you try them, they're like really powerful. But man, oh man, they actually have ignited my curiosity in so many things. I want to go back to programming. Programming became horribly hard from when I started 35, 40 years ago. But now it's like, it's a dream. So the way we do it is just like, well, you don't want to keep digital devices away from your kids until they're 18. That's not training them for the real world. But there's also training them to use it correctly. So all technologies need to be, you know, you need to put in front of your kids. I know my, my daughter who's, well, oh, well, thank you. I'm, now I'm gonna, ooh, <laughs> wow, I feel so much happier. 
Um, no, you, you need to you need to train your kids in the technology and put limits on it and everything else, just like you would with driving or drinking or any kind of and any kind of food. It's it's the same thing. You need to train them, and you need to tell them right from wrong and how to use things and how to spot misinformation and all that stuff. And we're going to have AIs that fight the AIs. You have to remember, AIs are just a, a reflection of us. We're going to have good and bad AIs, and they're going to fight it out. And human nature, we're going to have wars between AIs. It's going to happen, just like there's wars between people. These, are, these things are just a reflection of us. You don't need the hand, you'll see. Those glasses no, are... I'm trying. It's no, still it's, very it's, no, it won't, right, man. It won't look good on camera. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Loving victorious beings, uh, right, glasses. I don't know if Lars right. is here. Okay, else. next question. <laughs> I can't see. Okay. Yeah, right Who's here. Next? Who's next? Who's back there? Okay, so just, uh, just shoot because we don't see very well as, uh, as you can see. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Just speak, we can see. <laughs> We, we've always had responsibility, whether we choose to use it or not, whether we created media before and what we did with social networks, what we've done with all kinds of other things. We should already have responsibility. We gave up that responsibility or we turned it over. So we need the responsibility in these AI things and, and the AI things just learn from the stuff that we've generated, right? And so, like I said, it could be the worst of things, it could be the best of things, and we can choose to just give it everything, which I don't think is the right way. But yes, we have a responsibility for what we train it, and to do it right, and we have a responsibility as in individuals to say, I wanna know what the hell is in these things. I wanna know who I am hiring to do some, some of this stuff. I don't wanna just take your word for it. Microphone, microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so in the same way, does it mean less video of cats and more deep content like we have at this conference? So by a way or another, we can feed the internet with uh, a deeper level of consciousness because this conversation happened most of the time out of the internet. Correct, correct. But look, the cats can still happen, all right? We just have to make sure that the data that we choose to train these uh, intelligent assistance with is the stuff that's not cats, right? It's the stuff that's uh, other things and make sure it's in balance. Right now, we know how much internet traffic is, is given to porn right now. Like 30% of internet traffic is to porn, okay? Are we gonna train it with that? Are we gonna train it with cat videos? Or are we gonna try to take the 10 or 15% or maybe even 5% of really intellectual content and real you know, holistic content and put that in? We know what's happened in the world. We used to have like you know, government sponsored stations with educational channels and all that other stuff. And now it's been overwhelmed by you know, mindless content that just sucks up your time versus the stuff that was educational. It's, it's up for us to figure out which agents we would use, just like we would find a tutor for our children, which is the best tutor, who can help them. You would go and make sure you know who they are, what they're doing, not just some random person, right? We need to do the same thing with these, these intelligent assistants that will be used. And guess what? Every audience I ever talked to, and every employee I've ever had. If I ask them, do you want an assistant to help you? They all go, yes, 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 now. Everybody wants an assistant to help them. So that's why Chad GPT has taken off like that. 200 million users right now, because everybody wants an assistant. We gotta know who these assistants are and who we're hiring, because everybody wants help. Do you have a question? Yeah, right here. Oh, there first, yeah, and then here. Just keep talking, keep talking. Keep talking, keep talking. I can hear you. We can hear you. No, no, get the microphone, they, they just activated it. Oh, Thank you. right. Yeah, there it goes. Um, thanks, Tony. Uh, I, you know, all of us that have hung around the uh, technology industry for a hell of a long time, I probably started around the same time you did, and the track record um, is mixed on controlling sure. content that goes in, so. Um, and that brings me to the core question here. Thinking about Ezra Klein, did an interview he did, um, the core question really isn't fixing the problems. The problem is avoiding them um, in the first Correct. place. Avoiding and them in that, the first place. Yeah, and so I'd go you know, to the, the core question, which is how do you, in a, we live in a time where nobody understands 
what these technologies are actually doing, what they're analyzing. Correct. At a technical level, we know, but we can't understand or analyze why they've gone wrong, why they're hallucinating. Yeah, we don't know how, how yeah. hallucinations happen. We don't know all these yeah. things. They're literally OpenAI last week created a tool to help their engineers figure out what it's doing. Yeah. Like, and, they don't know. Yeah. And they announced, and so the we built is, a tool to help us figure out what it's doing. So, you know, what do you see as the time frame for actually trying to have proper diagnostic tools? Because any weapon, because it is a weapon, it, ultimately. It can be. It can, can be. be. It doesn't Any have to weapon be. that you don't understand how it's functioning and what it's doing is incredibly dangerous by definition. Uh, absolutely. Um, you, Sam Altman said they're not making open, uh, open AI G, chat GPT-5. They've already said we have to go fix and work on the things we have in GPT-4 to really understand. We're seeing this field change by the day. I went on vacation for two weeks. I came back and went, what happened in two weeks? We've been in this business so long. It's like, oh my God, like, okay, two weeks. No, it literally changed, I've changed my opinion on so many things in just over the span of four months. Like, I go, oh, 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 right? Like, it's moving that fast. I think that these tools, all of this discussion, so many of us and already governments are getting involved. You see what's going on with the EU right now and already passing rapid legislation to go through literally in six weeks over AI. Like we've never seen people motivated and moving so fast. So I'm, I'm optimistic, you gotta be optimistic. If you're otherwise pessimism, you know, it's not gonna help you at all because this stuff's gonna help us. We need to co-evolve with it. We are gonna co-evolve with it quickly. And I'm in my, I've been through, you know, Pre-internet, before the internet, right? Smartphone revolution, digital media revolution, all these different things. I've seen social media revolution. I've seen it all. This is crazy fast, but the amount of discussion about the downsides, I've never seen it as amplified as we hear it today and governments getting involved now, which is great. So, of course, it can be used for bad, but we are moving as a, as a, a, a planet in the right direction to put this, you know, try to figure out what's going on here. Uh, can we just switch? Well, we'll, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, we're going over time. I'm sorry. You can talk to Tony after. Like, go ahead. Hey, t Tony, quick question. Um, yeah. You're one of the more prolific hardware makers in the technology industry. I'm sure you don't have this locked in yet, but I'm curious where your brain is at for <laughs> where there's going to be a hardware instantiation with AI. Truth be told, six years, seven years ago, I was actually making the hardware at Google to replace Google Glass to do this, okay? So- I loved Google Glass. What? I mean, it sucked, but I loved the idea. That, right, you loved the idea, but there was a much better device, and we were making it, and it got killed along the way, but literally, I have the prototypes, and it was literally like her. Okay, we've all seen voice interfaces. We've all seen these Alexa and yeah. OK Google and kind of Siri and all that stuff. They're just command and control. Yeah. They didn't, and I always said, these things are gonna be great only when there's an incredible intelligence behind it in the cloud. We have it now and it's time for that thing to exist. So these things are coming, are coming. In the next two to three years, you are going to see a plethora of these headsets, display list devices all coming that allow you, won't replace your phone, but it will allow you in very si in different situations to have these things to be talking to your assistant who you hope you know who you hired, you know their resumes, so you hire them and you train them with your stuff and then they help you out. So the hardware is coming, it's gonna be edge-based devices, we don't have to worry about the servers, that's all taken care of already, those servers are gonna be there. What we really need is we need the edge-based devices and there's gonna be a plethora of different ones in your home and definitely on your person and it's not you know, the watch is one, you have your Apple Watch, yeah, it's I, finally I, gonna be I don't useful. Like it, yeah. It's gonna be finally useful, now it's just a, whatever, it's just an accessory to a phone. You're gonna see your AirPods and all that kind of stuff is gonna become actually very interesting because you won't need a screen. So that's coming, and it's coming fast. We, we, we have a ceremony, a closing ceremony just outside, cacao <laughs> ceremony, uh, but it's gonna be great. <laughs> and so I'd like to, I'd like to uh, close the conference with a few, just a few things. Uh, Tony, how do you, what do you, so you give me product advice for power, right? You, you told me, for example, do not drive your audience nuts, like giving them uh, so many speakers yesterday. Yeah. You said that. Yeah. yeah, I said, it's an experience, right? You're gonna wear them out. 
Well, it's like warrior training. <laughs> it's warrior training. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, where should I take it next? What? We take well, it next. This is my second one. This is your second one. Uh, I'm looking forward to helping you, you know, consider to think about this. But I think what we, it really needs to happen is POW is a, an incredible community and an incredible vision you have. And I think what needs to be done is I think there's got to be a way to keep power going, not just twice a year or once a year, but you know, a weekly or, or daily kind of thing that we have through an app and uh, different kind of stuff like that. So hopefully I can help you with that. So I would like to bring on stage uh, the, my partner and co-founder of Power. Um, only through photos. Uh, Mihai, if you can help me with that and the team. And uh, just thank Magdalena. Oh, for, yeah, Magdalena. Where is for, she? Um, there she is. For taking care of Falco. <laughs> these, these are photos like right now. So, who is really doing Falco is uh, Falco. Power is Falco. You can see him uh, right here. He's five months. <laughs> Training him on an AI. Agent. He's typing like uh, he really likes computers, which is as scary as, of course, exciting. Uh, and you have children, so you know you know what I mean here. But I, I wanted to bring Magdalena and Falco with us because, uh, uh, well, I dearly miss her. Uh, note that each time I say I, it's we. <laughs> so I'm self-correcting here. Uh, we created Power together. Um, and she was here last year. She, she was here only for Zoom here this year. And um, she's taking care of our little boy. But I wanted to thank Magdalena here. And uh, <laughs> acknowledge the huge work that she has done and bringing many friends of, uh, of her for many, many years here. And uh, um, so grateful for everything that, I, that she, Magdalena has done behind the scenes. Um, so thank you, Magdalena. The, I have a surprise for Magdalena. And that's why I kept you here, because you're oh, like, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we created this thing, and I shared a few ideas with you. I, I can feel, we can feel, uh, that there is uh, something going on which is much more than a conference, which is, uh, it's already a community, 700 plus 1,000 people on WhatsApp, but numbers don't really count. It's the quality of the people in there. And so we also have many of you that want to help us do power in, in New York, maybe in Miami, maybe it's visible, maybe it's Stockholm. I, I heard Dubai, I heard, and these are Costa you, Rica. who? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yeah. Who else? <laughs> I mean, we have 40, pizza, yeah. We have 40, 40 countries in the room. Yat wants to do Hong Kong with Gino. And so, whoa, right? And uh, I want to remind uh, that uh, this whole thing is, uh, I'm, vo I'm a volunteer. <laughs> it's made by volunteers. And volunteers, please get ready to join us uh, on stage. I'm, I'm going to let you go. Don't worry, Tony. Okay. Right? Oh, my God. Uh, but before that, I would like to make an announcement that happened in 24 hours here is that I made a wish, we made a wish together, because I, I, I'm just a messenger here, to actually make this happen. And so we talked with friends, and can I have a next slide up and uh, make a quick announcement uh, that we have founding investors and partners for Power in 24 hours. Do I need to click? There you go. And so Tony Fadel is investing in Power. <laughs> Yatsu, Tim Chang, and Gil Penchina are all, uh, you know, we, we all have, like corridor chats, literally, right? Yeah. And like, like, you guys should keep going with this and, uh, and, and uh, you know, the time with the Kogis we had, with the indigenous, with all of you, the startups, this is, uh, I think, a story. And, uh, and, and in 10 years, we'll look at this as probably a founding moment. So that was a surprise for Magdalena. I wanted to announce <laughs> it here. But you are all on this slide as well. We are going to do a DAO, because uh, I don't know if you know, but yet he's like uh, one of the best uh, person in the world for uh, Web3. We're going to do a DAO, and I, I, my wish is that all of you are partners as well in power um, in the 
and that we turn it into a decentralized, you know, right, right now, um, you know, we are, uh, we are not, but we want to turn it into DAO decentralized and make it grow so that everyone who helps also owns a piece of it. And, uh, and we, we believe in this thing called Web3. So. So thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Yat. Thank you, thank you Gil Penchina. And uh, let's uh, bring all the fa let's let's thank Tony and let you go. <laughs> thank you, Louis. <laughs> Congratulations. That, man. That's a hard one, yeah. And uh, let's bring all the volunteers. Thank you, Tony. You staying for the cacao? You get some cacao with us? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Uh, let's bring all the volunteers and uh, supporters if you want. You're welcome on stage um, to close the, close the ceremony that is power before the real ceremony. I want to thank also everybody online. Um, please come on stage. Come in. Don't, don't, don't uh, wait for me to keep talking. Come, come, come. Uh, because everything was run here through by volunteers. And... Um, uh, you have probably noticed that, so thank you, Yuri. And uh, we should have some music. I don't know if we can put some music. We'll do the cacao ceremony. Join us on uh, WhatsApp. I want to thank everybody online as well. Keep coming, keep coming. Thank everybody online as well that are following us. And uh, see you at the next power. I don't know where it is yet, but Magdalena and I will be happy with you to work on, uh, on that and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hey, we have Raquel and the team also. Is he, yeah, everybody's here. No, no. All right. Well, those who are here are here. Raquel is here. Celeste. Yeah, Mihai. Come on, Celeste, where are you? Alex is here coordinating all the volunteers. Uh, and this is how it happened. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's have some cacao. To the next power. Yeah. <laughs>